Hi, this is Greg Kilstrom. Welcome to season three of the Agile World, where we discuss customer and employee experience, organizational and workforce transformation, and how business can adapt and continually improve in an Agile age. The Agile World podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to techsystems.com. To read more about the topics discussed in this show, you can go to my website at theagile.world and read my latest articles or get a copy of my latest book, The Agile Workforce, now available on Amazon and other retailers. My name is Greg Kilstrom, and I'm the host of the Agile World podcast. You could say that there's never a wrong time to make a positive change in your life, whether that's personal or professional. Today, we're going to talk about career changes in the midst of the pandemic and how the last year has provided us all with some perspective about what we do and don't want in our lives. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Jeremy Klein, host of the Change Work Life podcast. Jeremy, welcome to the show. Great to be here, Greg. Thanks for having me. Yeah, looking forward to talking with you. Um, So we'll get started here by uh, talking about, uh, you know, the pandemic has been a a time of change for a lot of people, really for probably for everyone. Um, for you, it was also a time of career change. Um, your podcast was started just a few months after the pandemic started. Um, can you give a little background and, and tell us how things got started and why you decided to start it in the first place? Yeah, well, I actually started the podcast before the pandemic started. So it's oh. one of those things. Um, it started in October 2019. And I, you know, obviously, I didn't realize at the time just how relevant it was going to become a few short months later. Um, yeah, I mean, to tell you why I started the podcast, let me start by just explaining who it's for, and then it'll become apparent why I started it. So the podcast is for you if you're a professional, you're a lawyer, accountant, something like that. And you've been doing it a fair while now, you've been doing it for maybe 10 or 15 years, you're getting a good reputation, you're getting quite senior, you're well respected, pretty well paid, and outside of work, family, mortgage, car, kids, you know, all the the usual trappings of uh, sort of midlife professional life. And outwardly, everything looks great. Everyone kind of looks on and goes, wow, you've got it made. I mean, life's just great for you. The only pro- trouble is you just really don't like your job. It just isn't fulfilling. You would long to do something else. The only problem is that you've got a lot of fear around making the change. So fears around, well, what will it mean I'm going to take a pay cut? What am I going to do? I've been doing this for the past 10, 15, 20 years. What, what can I do? I mean, you know, I've only been a lawyer. What, what? What else could I do? Um, Am I going to have to go back to study? Am I going to have to spend a load on qualifications as well as not earning anything in the meantime? Am I going to be able to support my family? What are my friends going to think? What are my family going to think? And so you've got all these sorts of thoughts buzzing around in your head. And I started the podcast to explore all these sorts of issues to find out just what was out there. And well, you've probably guessed the reason why I started it. That person that I've just described, yep, that was me. Um, and you know, to an extent, it is still me because I'm I'm very much mid transition. And um, the yeah. podcast was the means through which I've kind of started my own transition to find out what is out there and either see where the podcast takes me of itself, whether that leads me to something, or whether just the the act of exploration leads me to something else. Yeah, and you you touched on this a little bit, but I think you know we're I'm I'm reading so much in the in the news lately about uh, I I heard the term uh, yesterday the Great Resignation, <laughs> and you know there's there's all these terms kind of being floated about about people changing their perspectives on work uh, during the pandemic. What are you know? Why do you think this is the case, and and you know how does how do you think it's the pandemic has affected others others like yourself and um, in in thinking about their options? One of the things that's been said about the pandemic is that it's accelerated a lot of trends. So it's accelerated the trend to home working. It's accelerated the trend to online shopping, 
And I think for those people who were already in a position where they weren't particularly satisfied, they weren't necessarily going to do anything about it. It was a case of, oh, well, you know, this isn't great, but, you know, I'll carry on plodding on for a bit. Right. It's accelerated their thinking in terms of, well, hang on a minute. Do I really want things to go back to the way they were? And I think there's there's a few things wrapped up in there. Um, people have got a realisation of the fragility, potentially, of their situation. There are people who they've been employees of the month and yet they have been made redundant or have been furloughed. You know, people are realising that jobs aren't necessarily safe through no fault of your own. Yeah. And they're starting to think, well, if my job isn't safe, why don't I concentrate on doing something that I actually enjoy doing rather than just sticking around with this and thinking I'm doing a good job and then being told, well, hey, ho, sorry about this, but we've got to let you go. And there's also the, the, the wider issue of you know, people realising not just the fragility of work, but the fragility of life. You know, loved ones have been taken away from us and people are realising, well, hey, you know, there's, there's got to be more to life than this. I've got um, a, a, a series of interviews, um, which I guess by the time this show goes out, it'll probably already be out, um, where I, I'm interviewing people who have made changes directly as a result of the pandemic um, one of whom was just that person I described, you know, she was doing great, but then was made redundant and she's used it as an opportunity to start her own business. And then another one who was in, you know, a really great job in financial services. I mean, he was able to go out to Michelin starred restaurants and he was able to uh, go on exotic foreign holidays, but the work was killing him. I mean, it was just, it was really affecting his mental health. And when, as a result of the pandemic, he you know, was forced to spend more time at home and spend time with his kids, playing with his kids, he, he realised that he just couldn't go back to the way things were. And so even without having a plan, he quit his job. And, um, you know, he, he spent few months figuring out what he was going to do and he's now moved from financial services he started his own mobile pizza oven he, oh, he's wow. got a <laughs> converted horse box which he's you know he's installed a pizza oven and put on fairy lights and that kind of thing and um you know initially his plan was to go around to you know events shows festivals that sort of thing but then you know, that got put on ice when we went into the whichever lockdown it was here in the UK um, but he just parked it on his drive told his neighbours and he's been booked solid he's just had you know tons of business and now things are opening up he is doing the festivals the weddings and all that sort of thing um, and from speaking to him he's you know <laughs> he loves it he's never been happier do you think this is permanent or, you know, do you think this is a, a reaction and, and there may be a, as they say, equal and opposite reaction um, uh, on the on the other side of some kind of return to, to normalcy or something? Or do you think this is, a, you know, this things have been going long enough that this is this is a permanent change of being? I think we're going to be meeting somewhere in the middle and businesses and employees, for that matter, are trying to figure out what that middle is. I mean, what the pandemic has demonstrated is that for a large proportion of people, certainly not everyone, but for a large proportion of people, home working is absolutely possible. There were companies out there who, even in the past year or so, were really, really reluctant to have uh, their employees working at home, even if they had all of the you know the, the systems in place and um, you know all the remote access requirements, but they just wanted to keep an eye on people. But the past year or so has proven that people can and will just get on with work as as normal, um, even from a home environment. Um, some companies have said that 
they're not expecting employees back in the office. Some are making it voluntary. Some are insisting that employees come back either on a full-time basis or a part-time basis. There's going to be change. I mean, how far the pendulum will swing the other way, I don't know. But I think employers are going to have to listen to their employees. There's there's just such a lot of people out there who have discovered, you know, maybe they don't want to work at home full time, but having the flexibility to do it a few days a week, it's really valuable to them. And if they're not able to do it at their current place, then well, you know, maybe maybe they will move on. And I think if if businesses are going to retain talent, they are going to have to show a certain amount of flexibility. So you have kind of a unique perspective on this as far as there's a lot of people that are firsthand changing jobs or, or considering. You've been, your show, which, you know, as you said, pre it started pre-pandemic, but you've had kind of front row seats to just people changing their careers and, and the thought process even to, to how things are, um, are, are going for, for individuals. Do you have any insights or, or perspectives on, it's kind of the, the change of the change, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a meta, meta view of things. Like, do you have any, do you have any insights on um, having talked with people, maybe even people's change in perspective over the course of, of the pandemic? And, and now as we're, we're headed ideally towards some kind of aftermath, uh, you know, what, what has that, what is that per perspective that you have um, kind of what insights has it given you? Again, a lot of this, I think, is about acceleration. And I think in terms of the thoughts that people might be having about changing and perhaps the thought processes that they might want to go through, they're kind of the same as they were before it, it's just that people are now thinking about it in far more realistic terms you know maybe they've had change forced upon them or they're really considering things much more seriously but I guess some of the a, a couple of the biggest lessons that really spring to mind from um, various interviews I mean I'm, you know, I'm, I'm up to well over 100 interviews now um, and there's there's some regular themes which keep coming through and I think one of the most important ones is that people tend to feel defined by what they've done before so going back to my example of the lawyer who's been in the job for 10-20 years and just doesn't know what they can do they, they might start the question with something along the lines of, well, I've been a lawyer for the past 15 years. This is the area of law that I worked in. I don't really want to be a lawyer anymore, but with that background and with those skills, what could I do? And so people tend to limit themselves and narrow their horizons, thinking that they've got to do something which kind of segues quite naturally from whatever they've done before um, and what the podcast has shown me and what speaking to people has shown me is that that really isn't the case there's absolutely no reason why someone who studied a particular degree at college and then went on to do a particular professional career needs to do anything which is in any way remotely related to whatever that degree or whatever that career was whatever they've been doing there's going to be transferable skills that they've picked up which will be useful in some way shape or form to whatever it is that you go on to do yeah. but yeah going on from you know being a lawyer of 15 years standing to becoming a pastry chef or becoming a landscape gardener or becoming a hypnotherapist it's it's completely possible and you kind of need to look at it the other way around you don't start with your background and experience and think what it could lead on to you start with well what is it that I'd actually like to do what sort of career 
fits my my own personal skills, my likes and dislikes, my preferences, the things that I'm good at, what might that lead to? Okay, so here's a few ideas. Well, there's a few gaps in there, right? Well, how can I fill in those gaps? What do I need to do to either gain the qualifications or experience so that I can fulfill that? So I think that's the, the first real takeaway um, that I've picked up from from the people I've spoken to on the podcast. Yeah. The, yeah. the sec- sorry, oh, sorry, go on. I, I was going to say that the second one is, it's a word that makes a lot of people's skin crawl, but um, networking. Yeah. Um, people have quite a skewed view of what networking is. You know, it's seen as this kind of, um, you know, barefaced, confident, going around selling stuff to people. Um, and it really isn't. It's it's really literally just talking to people. I mean, you and I, you know, you've been a guest on my podcast. I'm now a guest on your podcast. We've exchanged emails. We're, we're networking. That's exactly what we're doing. And yeah. the, the value of networking is, in any kind of career change can't be understated Uh, i'm i'm in the process of figuring out what i might do next and and i've got you know i've I've had a few ideas um but the only way i can find out about what those ideas might involve um who i might be serving what the work i'm considering actually looks like is by talking to people. So I've been reaching out sometimes to people I know, sometimes to people I don't know, and saying, look, can I spend a few minutes of your time on a call? I'd like to discuss this with you. It's it's something that doesn't come naturally to a lot of people. It's, it's kind of quite scary. It's make, it means making yourself a little bit vulnerable. Yeah. But the value you can get, you know, if you're... Thinking about starting a business where you are serving a a particular um, a particular niche, rather than coming up with a fully formed product and hoping that the people in that niche are going to buy it, what about starting off by talking to those people and saying, "So, what is it you need? What sort of stuff are you looking for?" And then signing your product or service around that. Um, Similarly, if you think, well, you know, I'd quite like to be a landscape gardener, I think, but I know absolutely nothing about it. Well, go find some landscape gardeners, go speak to them. Um, People are generally incredibly helpful. They are incredibly approachable. People generally just want to help. I mean, I've I've found that when I was um, reaching out to people to be guests on the podcast, um, I was really surprised at the hit rate. I was really surprised at the number of people who said, yes, I'd, I'd love to come on. Um, generally, by nature, people are helpful and just want to help you out. Um, and as well as the, the you know, the, the, the usefulness of the conversations, just building that network, it, it keeps you high in mind. And so, you know, you might not know someone who is able to answer your question, but you're almost certain to know someone who knows someone who will, yeah. who will be able to answer that question. It's it's incredibly valuable. Yeah, no, it's, I completely agree. I mean, I I sometimes take for granted my, I have a marketing background. And so, you know, some of these things, um, doing marketing, doing sales, they're, they're things that you kind of have to do to be successful in, in those worlds. But a lot of people, you know, they don't come from those backgrounds and, and so they haven't really had to network. They haven't really had to do, you know, to, to the other do product research or market research or, or things like that. And so, you know, I, I sometimes forget it doesn't come naturally to, um, to some people just based on, it just hasn't really come up. So that's, I think that's great advice. And people just need to realize that, you know, when you go down to the pub with your mates for a drink, that's that's networking yeah i mean you're you know you're creating relationships with people you're talking to people you're you're finding out about them they're finding out about you it's just talking to people it really is yeah yeah great 
Well, let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit here. Um, you know, a couple more questions before we wrap up, um, and talk a little bit about you know. So your your change was um, starting your podcast, and um, I'd love to just as a fellow podcaster, just love to get a, a few thoughts on on maybe a more technical standpoint of of growing a podcast. But can you talk a little bit about what did you learn along the way with your show and and what worked um, to grow your, your show and your audience? I think I'm still figuring that out. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's the holy grail of any podcaster is to, to build your audience. Um, and I'm a member of a few online podcast communities. And that has got to be the question that comes up most often. How do I build my audience? How do I get more listeners? Um, I mean, the first thing... I would say when I first decided I was going to do a podcast and um, I started to get into it, I was incredibly naive about the number of listeners I thought I'd be able to get. I mean, I thought, you know, oh, yeah, I just need to build my audience to um, a few thousand downloads every week and that'll be great. Um, And yeah, trying to build your audience, especially when you are starting from scratch, is really really challenging um i mean some people have already got a business or a following or an email list i was literally starting from absolute zero you know i had no list no nothing i i have had to basically hustle for every listener that i've got at the moment um and yeah when i look back i just can't believe how naive i was thinking oh yeah a few thousand listeners that'll be that'll be fine. I mean, um, it, it's been far harder to build up an audience. The The technique that I have found most effective so far has been finding where my audience is online and engaging there. Um, so what I discovered is that a lot of people who have questions around jobs and careers, um, they seem to hang around on Reddit. So there's lots of Mm. uh, subreddits there where there's lots of questions that come up. Um, You see the same questions coming up again and again, which I think, okay, well, there's a podcast episode in there. Clearly that's something that people want to know about. And then I'll see a question which is relevant to something that I've discussed on the podcast. And I can say, Okay, well, here's some ideas. Oh, and by the way, if you want some more detail about this, I've got an episode on the podcast where we go into it in more detail. Take a listen if you think it might be useful. And, you know, you've you've got to not be kind of scammy about it. You've you've got to not be, um, you know, just say, hey, yeah, listen to my podcast. You've got to give a bit of value as well. Um, But having the material there um, and the audience there that has certainly helped to um, build up the audience. I mean, it's it's slow doing it that way. I mean, you are literally building up the audience listener by listener. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's slow growth, but it was um, a great way to get started. Um, and then what I'm doing, which um, I will, which will hopefully build up a bit more of an audience, is um, appearing on other podcasts such as uh, your very own fine podcast and. Um, I'm hoping that people will think, oh, you know, Greg's got a cracking podcast, but oh yeah, that guy, Jeremy, he was uh, saying a few interesting things. I might check out, um, check out his podcast as well. Cause um, yeah, I, I, I kind of uh, resonate with, with that person he was describing. So maybe he's got some stuff that'll help me out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I highly recommend it. So <laughs> it's, yeah, no, it's, 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 there's, you know, there is to your point, there's, there's a lot of competition out there for, um, audience and, and, you know, there's only so many hours in the day and, and, and stuff like that. Do you see, um, th- audio channels like clubhouse? And I know there's a few smaller competitors, but you know, things like clubhouse, do you think they're helping to grow the, the appetite for podcasts? Do you think they're hurting because they're competing? Like what are, what are your thoughts on, on things like that? 
I'll confess not to having really used Clubhouse yet, um, and that's because I went the Android route rather than the Apple route, and Clubhouse has literally only just come out on Android. Um, but from what I know about Clubhouse and you know the similar things that are popping up, I think they're quite different but complementary. So Clubhouse is somewhere where you go where you want to join a room and you want to hear people discussing a particular topic and maybe you want to have an opportunity to get called up on a stage because you've got something to contribute to whatever the room's discussing. And it, it's more of a, a live interactive experience and yeah. something that you know you can you could probably spend two hours or three hours even just exploring it being part of a room maybe seeing what what's what's going on in other rooms clubhouse isn't something that i would do on the move i mean my my preferred way to learn new stuff generally is through podcasts and it's something which when i was commuting before i was working from home i was incorporating into my daily commute and it's now something that I incorporate into my daily walks. Um, you know, I, I listen to podcasts primarily to to learn new stuff, also, also for entertainment. There's a, a few that I listen to which are you know, more in, in that bracket rather than the learning stuff. And yes, you can learn stuff in Clubhouse and yes, you can learn th- stuff through podcasts just as you can learn stuff through reading books, watching YouTube, watching TV, whatever. But it's um, it's a different environment. It's a, a different medium. So it's it's one of those things where when I find the time, I will explore what's going on. Yeah. But yeah, I think it, it should, in principle, be something that can actually support content creators generally. I mean, not just podcasters, but anyone who's creating content around a particular subject and looking to showcase their expertise. Um, I think being able to create these these kind of live forums has got to be a good thing. Yeah, that's great. Well, uh, Jeremy, thanks so much for joining the show. Um, for those listening, what's the best way for them to keep up with what you're doing? Yeah, so everything is on my website and that's uh, changeworklife.com so it's all one word changeworklife.com you'll find there the complete uh, back catalogue of uh, podcast episodes and there's also a link to where you can find me on facebook twitter and instagram so um yeah great place to start changeworklife.com and um there's a, a contact button there so i'd, I'd love to hear from you um and also i i mentioned earlier that you when you're contemplating a career change you kind of you don't want to start from where you are but you want to start from what you enjoy and also what you want your job to do for you what what sort of lifestyle do you actually want your job to support um and in that regard i've got a a a couple of exercises um which uh you can sign up for um, which are just designed to help you out. They they help you by going back into your career history and looking to the future, figure out what sort of stuff historically you have enjoyed, what you do enjoy doing, what you are good at, and also what you do want life to look like in, say, five years' time. Um, so if you go to uh, changeworklife.com forward slash happy, so H-A-P-P-Y, changeworklife.com forward slash happy, then that will take you to the, those exercises. Wonderful. That sounds that sounds great. Well, again, I'd like to thank Jeremy Klein, host of the Change Work Life podcast, for joining the show. Thanks for listening to The Agile World with Greg Kilstrom. See you next week. Thanks again for listening to The Agile World podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can learn more and get a copy of my latest book, The Agile Workforce, from my website at theagile.world.